Oops, I've got Discord notifications on. Notification sounds, that is. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the stream. Let me turn that off real quick. There we go. <laughs> Hey, welcome. Um, today, it's Hot Wheels. I got these games set up last night. I know that they are working. Wow, me preparing stream? Who would have thunk it? <laughs> oh, poop, have I crashed the game by capturing it again? Yeah, I crashed it by capturing it! <laughs> Incredible. Okay, let's try that again. You have to have the capture open first, or else the game gets very upset with you. Hello, Chroma. It's actually very early for me. Very early for streaming. But it happened again. This I had the capture open. Please. There, finally captured and the game is running. <laughs> The music in this game is pretty incredible. Just let that sink in for a bit. <laughs> so I got this game recently. You may remember I did an unboxing video of it. I played through the whole thing. And uh, it was really interesting. So I wanted to stream it. Um, what was I going to say about it? Um, it's graphically really interesting, as you'll see once I get started. Um, oh yeah, it's that um, I couldn't... There was some stuff that was like difficult to figure out. Um, but there's, there's like so little information about this game online. Like, just, like, basically nothing, and, like, I couldn't find anybody who had done, like, a full playthrough of it online. Like, there was no complete playthroughs of this game online. So I was like, okay, well, I've got to stream it now. I'll be the first uh, full playthrough. <laughs> We're going to play this whole dang game. Both for fun and for archival purposes. <laughs> You want speed? You want danger? You want action? Look at this guy, by the way. This is... You can see a lot of this guy. Welcome to Stunt Track Challenge, the show that has got it all. I'm your host, Ryan Storm. The rules of the show are simple. Beat the up... Beat the opposition. I, for some reason, my brain was thinking that was going to be opponent and started saying it that way, but... It's wild to you how big a series Hot Wheels was while simultaneously having left almost no mark. Yeah, like, <laughs> I've seen this game come up several times for its, like, graphical, um, like, prowess? Or just for how, like, cool it is graphically? Technically impressive? That's what I was thinking of. Um, but I've never seen anybody do the whole thing. And also, I was trying to look up guides for this game, right? The only guides that exist are just lists of all the passwords. Um... And guides for the, the console and PC versions. Like, there was a guide for the Xbox version. This isn't going to help me. This is a completely different game. And in fact, there was a part I was stuck on. Um, and when I looked up that part, I didn't find how to do it. I just found someone with the exact same question from, like, ten years ago. And it was never answered. So I was like, wow, great. I almost answered the question now. In fact, I probably should still do that at some point, because <laughs> I know how to do it. <laughs> so, I'm filling in a gap by streaming this entire game. 
This will probably take a couple streams because it's a, it's it's not a terribly long game, it, but it did take me a few days. Well, I wasn't playing it like constantly, but it took me a few days to finish everything in this game. So a couple streams will probably do it. It's a really easy game too. Wait, what it is? Oops. Okay, well, we didn't get to see his entire dialogue. Now I'll look at him. <laughs> Hey, it's time to go to an age of monsters, to an age of danger. Get ready for the Jurassic Jam. Okay, contestant, here's your first challenge. Pull off enough stunts to score 300 points before the timer reaches zero or you cross the finish line. Good luck. Hmm. Does this remind you of anything that I've just played recently? Yeah, here you go. Check it out. Full 3D graphics on the Game Boy Advance. And it runs pretty smooth, too. Well, that was... That was great. Okay. <laughs> we're not going to use the password, so we're just going to... I'm just going to save state it. <laughs> now it's time to show what you're made of. It's a flat-out race, and you need to finish in first place. Good luck. And may the contestant... May the best contestant win. Can you imagine if you just said, May the contestant win? Yeah, I was... I was interested to play this because of the, the graphics, primarily. I would have been amazed by this as a kid. I didn't know that the Game Boy could do this stuff. <laughs> the cars are f like 3D models too, with textures and everything. I think what makes this more impressive than other uh, Game Boy Advance 3D games is just that it, you know, the frame rate is reasonable. <laughs> It's not running at like two frames a second. <laughs> and it's got fairly detailed environments too. I think they were smart to go with mostly untextured polygons. Probably helps. Because some of the other 3D games, like just they went all in and everything was textured and everything. Also, in this era, Hot I didn't realize how many things Hot Wheels games had in common. Like, the sound effect for when you, uh, clear a lap is just the same sound effect that it is in other Hot Wheels games that I've played. The, like, the engine sounds are, like, familiar. Oh, keep that loop in mind, by the way. Next time we go around the loop, I'm going to, uh, mention something. Yeah, that little sound that- Dew! That's familiar to me. <laughs> um... What was I gonna say about this? Yeah, they just there was like a there was definitely like a Hot Wheels style to the games. This era. And like nobody has documented this stuff really. <laughs> I think most people play these games as, like, oddities nowadays. Rather than actually playing them. One thing I will note about, like, as much as I enjoyed this game, um, I think most people, it really is just, like, they will just be impressed by the graphics for a bit and then never really think about it again, because it is, it's a really easy game. It's really super easy. <laughs> It's a game for children. Okay, on the loop, watch the background. I really like how they pulled this off. See that? They actually made it look like you like go around the loop, but they seem to change the background to something different. Because I was wondering about that. I was like, well, the background is clearly just a flat image that doesn't move. But uh, they turned it into a different vertical background, and it goes by quickly. It looks like you actually go around the loop. It's pretty neat. <laughs> I think this was more impressive when I was playing it on, you know, the real hardware. But it's still really cool to see anyway. <laughs> In my opinion. Also, um, it really amused me how just like... All of the environments in this game are just, like, stereotypical little boy interests. 
Like here we're starting with dinosaurs. And there's like there's pirates and there's a volcano and there's outer space and <laughs> there's the second level is spiders. It's just <laughs> little boys like bugs and spiders and icky things. Okay, you're supposedly going nearly 200 miles an hour, and yet the trees are just leisurely passing you by. <laughs> yeah. I think it's just because they're so massive. These aren't, like, normal-sized trees. Everything's huge. You won a prize. New car awarded. Also, um... An oddity about this game is that... Like, oh, also there's, like, two different colors you can pick for the cars, which is cool. More than I would have expected. But an oddity about this is that you'll notice there's no stats for the cars. Also, I love how the cars on the on the menu here are also clearly low poly models, but they're like a bit more detailed than the ones you actually get in the game. <laughs> it's funny. Um, but yeah, there's like no stats for the cars, so there's nothing discernible I can tell about the different cars other than looks there's like it's just that you're making an aesthetic decision rather than an actually meaningful one <laughs> yeah this doesn't really seem like 170 miles per hour does it I've forgotten the massive trees of the Hot Wheels universe. Oh, uh, poop. Oh, there you go. Hey, hey, that was hot. You did it. But was it wheels? You need to score 600 stunt points before your car lands on the other side of the jump. Good luck. Eventually, you get tired of picking other cars because the list gets so long. Dang, I did it. And so I just stick with Vulture. <laughs> but then you get tired of the same car every time and you want some variety. So then it's worth it to go through and pick the other cars. Just gotta get first place. It is true, Chroma. Like, on one level, I appreciate that, uh... Um, that you can just viably play with whatever car you want. <laughs> I wish it would, like, remember your decision from last time, though, so you don't have to scroll all the way to it every time. That's my only complaint, really. I also like that they all they went through um, the trouble of giving the car a shadow as well. It's very nice. As far as I can tell, there's not there's not much to the uh, not much like documentation of the uh, console and PC version of this either. I mean, it does have guides, but uh, it doesn't really seem to have a lot of videos or anything either. Maybe I should look into that version too. <laughs> I think that one's probably just not as interesting because it's just, like there's not gonna be anything impressive about its graphics. Comparatively, probably. Um... I think its structure is just completely different. Like, I think this is just... This is, like, just like a way simpler game than that is. I haven't looked into it too much, so I can't really explain too much, because I don't know. Also, you see this item? The, the, the jet booster? It disappeared now, but... You want to know what that does? So, what do you what, so if you see, so you hear an item called the jet booster, right? What do you what are you gonna guess that that does? <laughs> what, 
of like you hear that what would you think it does just a, just a, just a wild guess and boost your pet hawk <laughs> well for me I would have thought that it would make you go faster right um, but it turns out that's not at all what it does it just uh, improves it makes makes your turn makes you able to turn tighter gives you tighter turning radius and uh, it makes it so you can do tricks faster like each trick takes less time so you can do more of them before you land what a bizarre thing also these tracks are both like really short and also they take forever somehow like, they feel really long, even though they're just, like, physically very short. Are the jets, like, strapped to the front at 90 degree angles? I don't know! I don't know how it works! I feel like they must have changed it halfway through and not changed the name or the graphic for it. Or couldn't figure out anything that would, like, make sense to do that either. And they just... <laughs> They just left it as it was. Some of these these obscure games like this, there's so many like secrets to their development that we'll probably just never know. Because who knows where the people who worked on it are, or what they remember. This isn't even the most obscure game. A lot of people know about this one. Well, mostly because of people making videos about impressive 3D Game Boy Advance games, but yeah. <laughs> Way to go, you've completed the episode and won a new car. Roger Dodger. Alright, we're on to the spiders. <laughs> You have 22 seconds to reach the finish line. Can we make it? Look at this background, by the way. Like, is that... What is that? Is that like a... Is there just like... An extremely massive spider off in the background? Is that what I'm looking at? I love how doofy this environment is. Whoa, that was great. Now on to the next challenge. It's like, some of the levels are, like, they take, like, five seconds. And some of them are so long. <laughs> Sent to the spider dimension for booster credits. <laughs> Ready for the next challenge? This time you have to score 900 points and cross the finish line before the other card is. Hurry, you've only got 30 seconds. We'll do the Roger Dodger. It's 500. There's another 500. That wasn't the finish line. Okay. You were about to comment on the level length discrepancy? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think I scored way more than enough. Hey, that was hot. You did it. He thinks everything is hot. Black Widow's Nest. If there's a flat-out race to first place, you know it's going to take you five hours. Let's boost. The frame rate does suffer a little bit when there are other cars on screen. But thankfully, other cars are on screen for such a short part of the race that it doesn't matter. Because <laughs> you just pass everybody instantly and you never see them ever again. Okay, so this is a repeller. Uh, power up, which repels the other cars away from you if they get too close. The music in this game is really something. I think it. I think one thing that this game shares with its, its console and PC counterpart is the music. I mean, obviously the rendition of the music is different here, but yeah. Do the uh, competing drivers ever get much harder to deal with? They really don't, actually. 
in my experience. I think they get a little bit harder. I did like end up like coming in second a couple times. But it was like a mild challenge at best. And it was like it was mostly just annoying because of how long the races last to then like cuz they'd usually pass me like towards the end. And it was really annoying. <laughs> To sit here and like drive for like three minutes and then they pass me and I'm like gosh dang it I gotta do it again but thankfully it only usually took like two tries at most but <laughs> I think they get a little bit harder do they rubber band I don't think so I think they just respawn as well as you do but wasn't paying super close attention. It's just when you respawn, it's really slow. So if you screw up a jump, um, it can be very costly. That's essentially it. They don't really pass me unless I screw up a jump. Which is like, maybe I should just... I mean, but there's like, it's the one exciting thing you can do in this game, okay? The, like, the one... The one bit of excitement you have during these long drives... Is making the car flip every time you go over a jump. <laughs> also, one thing that's kind of funny about this game is notice, like... How many like tunnels there are with like a curve in them to hide the uh, the short draw distance, <laughs> so that you're always basically like looking at walls. There's not a lot of long straightaways in this game to make sure that hop in is minimized. They were very clever with that, to be honest. <laughs> they put a lot of stuff in your way where you get to different parts so that you pretty much never see stuff pop in <laughs> it's pretty funny it's also funny that because like of how this is done none of the background stuff can be animated so you just have these perfectly still spiders that are just there. Including the background, for whatever reason, there's just this... the most massive spider that has ever existed in the history of anything. Just a big boy. Yeah, I'm impressed with the level of detail that they get out of the environments in this. It does, at some points, feel like... Like 90% of development time... Went into making the... The visuals. And not, me not much went into, actually, the game, because it's like... The game is as simplistic as the graphics. <laughs> Most of the time, I guess I will say, oh yeah, there we go, Mega Duty. You need to successfully perform an L barrel before you reach the finish line. It's easy enough. I can, will never not laugh when I see the name of this car. Like, they're making, like, these are toys made with little boys in mind, right? Like I mentioned with the, uh... The, the choice of uh, environments in this game, so they had to know that they were making a name that would just that would that would make kids just like giggle when they hear it, right? Like there is no there is no child alive today or back when this game was made that would not hear the name Mega Duty and start laughing. <laughs> they had to know that they were making it funny, right?
You are now authorized to take a massive dump. <laughs> I think this one was just a race. So we're just gonna race. This music is wild. This is spider music. Get ready for spiders music, everybody. There you go. Boost activated. Eee! The loops are a pretty impressive part of this. I'm impressed they got those. Lo fi beats to be a spider, too. <laughs> hey, you ever tried being a spider before? Hey, Luigi, you ever tried being a spider? How long until they put a spider power-up in a Mario game? They put a spider power-up in Kirby. I mean, I know that's not much of a comparison, but... <laughs> they made Kirby into a spider. Do you think Kirby knows what a spider is? You think Kirby knows what anything is? Kirby knows what love is. That's what he knows. <laughs> You're not sure Kirby knows? <laughs> Kirby might be no thoughts head empty. In fact, I'm 90% sure he's no thoughts head empty. Kirby knows about love and friendship. That's my head cannon. But he doesn't have much of it in his heart because he like senselessly beats everyone up all the time, <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> There's very few uh, people that Kirby will not just beat up. When you think about it. So perhaps Kirby mostly just has violence in his heart. I swear, like, every track in this game is, like, at least three minutes long. It's incredible. Kirby takes no half measures because they'd instantly forget what they were doing if they stopped for but a moment. <laughs> Graphic here is just so weird. I love it. You never really get a good look at it either. Well, there it was for a second, but the hell is that? Like, you can't tell if it's just supposed to be just an utterly massive spider, or if it's like a big tree that kind of looks like a spider. I don't know. So we haven't seen it here, but there is a lot of like draw order errors that will happen. You go around the loop. If there are other cars on it ahead of you, you will see them through the loop. <laughs> but it's understandable because, like, Nintendo didn't really, like, so, like, the Game Boy Advance is obviously very capable of this, but Nintendo didn't really invest in the Game Boy Advance doing 3D. I think because they were really just, like, it was like with the Super NES, where they were just really concerned that it just wasn't going to look as good as other 3D stuff. All right, we're already at Buccaneer Bay. This game is shorter than I remembered. I think I just, I must not have spent very long playing it each individual time I played it on my own. I think we might, this might be less than two streams. Uh, what was I saying? 
What was I talking about? Oh, was there some point skull I was supposed to be doing here? Oh, no. It's just that... Oh, I gotta score 900 points. Okay. Oh, yeah. Not miss, not investing in 3D games much. Yeah, so... Um, so the Game Boy Advance doesn't, like... It doesn't have anything built in for doing this, other than just the hardware is capable of it. So anybody who wanted to do 3D had to write their own soft... Like, it was all software rendering. They all had to write their own software for the 3D rendering. Um, so I think that's why both not very many people did it, and also why the performance was often poor. And that's why you never ever saw Nintendo themselves do it. <laughs> Play Slingshot. I'm just playing as all the different cars for the sake of variety. How many maps are there? Okay, so there's... There's dinosaurs, spiders, pirates, a jungle, outer space, and a volcano. So, we're like halfway through. <laughs> and then after this, you unlock a mode where it's just one big race through each environment. Again. Nothing you haven't done, and yet they make- is that just like a giant hook hand? Is that what they've decided on for pirate scenery, is a massive hook hand? And the giant- see, I told you, Chroma, everything is just giant. There's a giant sword. Well, because, like, how else would you recognize this stuff, to be honest? With these kind of graphics on this- on this screen, you gotta make them just massive, or else you won't be able to recognize the pirate things. <laughs> There's also the driving school thing, which is just, like, a really- Incredibly long tutorial like the tutorial if you do the entire thing takes about as long as Like I don't know probably like half the game at least It's absurd. They like teach you every there's like one level for every individual trick you can possibly do for instance It's really it's too much For such a small game, it doesn't need such a massive tutorial. You're going to spend so much time learning how to play, and then there's going to be nothing to play, by comparison. It's like... <laughs> like, there's levels for, like, how to turn precisely, and, like, you have to, like, weave through cones and stuff. And, like, there's how to use the boost and every individual trick. You push the button and it does the do, you're right. It did a horrible job explaining how to do the hood air and trunk air moves, though. You have to hold the B button and then press up or down. Oh, also a tip I want to give for this, for the sake of, um, like, archival and making sure that there's information about this game, is that you can do the tricks a lot faster than it looks. Like, I was having trouble doing the tricks really fast until, um, I realized that you can kind of, like, you don't have to wait for it to end. You can start, like, hitting the button for the next trick while the current one is going. Like, you just sort of, like, hit the button over and over, and then you can do it instantly. As soon as it's available to do another trick. Um, but yeah, what I was getting at is that, like, why... Now I remember what I was trying to get at earlier is just that, like, why these 3D Game Boy Advance games are so, like, simple and shallow, aside from the graphics, is that they had to spend so much time on the graphics because Nintendo didn't provide anything for 3D. So if you wanted to attempt 3D, you were going to have to write all that yourself. <laughs> the Game Boy Advance had no built-in instructions or anything. Or, uh, like, it didn't have built-in hardware that was just dedicated for 3D. 
so you'd have to make all this yourself. And that's like, especially on like a licensed Hot Wheels game, if you're gonna go for 3D, uh, that's like all of your time is gonna be spent on making the 3D happen. And so like, this game isn't bad. Like I've liked it enough to play through the whole thing twice. Hi Shan, yep, Tuesday today. Tuesday stream today. Yeah, I like this game enough to play through the whole thing twice, but it's like, I will admit that it's really shallow. <laughs> but it's not like, it's not bad, you know? Sometimes it's okay to just have a simple little game, you know? I mean, maybe I only feel that way because I only spent $15 on it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, I didn't buy it full price. I spent a small amount of money for this. You won the race. Nice driving. You won a prize. New car awarded. Super tuned. Bone crush. Just knock over all of the cones. It's funny because this is the opposite of what you have to do in the tutorial levels, which is avoid cones. Also, it says you can't turn around uh, if you miss one. I think you just can't turn around in this game, like, period. I just don't- I don't think that works. Oh, poop. They put that one in a really missable place. I love how they went the extra mile of actually 3D mile- 3D modeling the cars. Like, they're like- they're actually textured 3D models in the game. Even though, like, they're sort of, they're mostly indiscernible from pre-rendered sprites that other games do. There you go. Yeah, they do have little, little orbs. <laughs> Party hat cones. Freestyle. 900 points. It's always 900 points. Oh yeah, let's do the banana yellow truck. Hell yeah. I have never seen a truck this color in real life. This is so easy. Yeah, Shan, rather than like Mode 7 style, this is fully 3D modeled. On the Game Boy Advance, it's really cool. Yeah, I think the best uh, 3D modeled game on the Game Boy Advance, um, as far as like playability and just being a good game, is Monkey Ball Jr. That's a very good game. Like the like the cars have to be so low poly that it's like you might get more detail out of pre-rendered sprites. <laughs> funny. I mean, you get more angles this way. Yeah, look, Shane, you even got loop-to-loops. <laughs> Hi, miss. Well, Junior is a bit held back by, held by low screen real estate. Oh, I see. Oh, I still enjoyed it. That was my first Monkey Ball game I played, actually. <laughs> and I got it just for the, the graphics, originally, but I enjoyed it. Wish there'd been fully 3D Sonic for GBA. That'd be cool. I was just discussing before you got here, Biss. That, oh yeah, look at this! You go underwater! Look at how they did this! <laughs> Just make a giant blue polygon over everything that's underwater. I love it. <laughs> um... Yeah, as I was saying, Bess, the Game Boy Advance didn't actually, like, it was capable of 3D, but didn't actually have any capability for it built in. So if you wanted to do 3D, you had to write it right. 
all of that yourself. It all had to be a uh, software rendering, and you had to write that software yourself. So with a lot of these games, they end up kind of bare bones. It's like this is a really simple game because I imagine they spent 90% of development on making the 3D happen. <laughs> And I guess nobody, like, shared their technology? Like, there's a couple companies I've heard about that had their own 3D engines for the Game Boy Advance that they used for multiple games. But they didn't, like, share them with other companies. So, you had to start from scratch for your own 3D. But I guess Sega did have their own 3D system for the Game Boy Advance. They did make Super Monkey Ball... well, no. Did Sega... Sega probably didn't develop it, actually. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if, if Sonic Team would have been able to share what they did for Monkey Ball. I feel like... I feel like the Game Boy Advance could have handled, like, Sonic R. Though, if they wanted to. Could have handled like that level of 3D, probably. Why did the monkeys go in balls? Was it to go fast? Says Shan. Um, I guess so. Who put the monkeys in the balls is, is the better question. Developed by Amusement Vision. And Realism. <laughs> a hell of a name for a development team. Imagine calling yourself Realism and then making Super Monkey Ball Jr. Also, I experienced an interesting glitch while I was playing this uh, on my own, where like one of the one of the NPC cars got stuck. Um, you could see them on the map; they were just sitting still. And then when I drove past them, they started moving again, <laughs> and like really fast to try and catch up. Which reminded me of uh, a glitch that I managed to do in. Uh, or not glitch, but just really weird behavior that I managed to do in Mario Kart Super Circuit as a kid. I posted about this. So you know how, like, in those older Mario Kart games, when, you, when you'd play as a certain character, there would always be, like, the order that the other characters would generally uh, place in was predetermined? Lonk Games is going to hot wheel me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Also, I can't believe there is a Hot Wheels car called Swoopy Doo, by the way. Let me interrupt myself to just point out Swoopy Doo. I knew a lot of Hot Wheels growing up, but uh, I managed to miss Swoopy Doo all my life. I can't believe that there's a car called Swoopy Doo. <laughs> I've played Monkey Ball Jr. and I've played Monkey Ball Banana Blitz HD. Um, and that one, uh, I never finished, like, all of the, like, I finished the main game. I didn't finish the two extra worlds because I really, I was always trying to get the best rank, and you have to do all of the levels in a row without, uh, without stopping to get the best rank. And, uh, let's just say I was having a bad time on those last ones. You need to perform a flip-flap and a flap-flop before they reach the finish line. This is to go for Swoopy Doo, I guess. Um, but yeah, about Mario Kart. So, in Mario Kart Super Circuit, if you played as Yoshi... Um, oops, that's not... I need to pay attention to what I'm doing. Peach would always end up, like, towards the back. I don't know if last place, but definitely below the top four. And so, I decided I was determined to, uh... Oh look, we're already onto the next world, I just realized. Um... I'm doing the same thing every time, aren't I? Okay, I definitely did both. I blew it? What, do you, what the hell are you talking about? I did a... Do I have to do them in a specific order? Um... T 
So yeah, Peach would always come towards the back, so I wanted to try and get Peach to uh, stay towards the front. And so I did this... Let me try again. I did this on um, Rainbow Road. So it had this big shortcut right at the beginning. And I kept redoing the track over and over um, until I would start with a mushroom so I could do the big shortcut at the beginning. Before the characters in the back with low acceleration could um, get past. And so I just kept going as fast as I possibly could to keep Peach um, in second place. Okay, well, I did them. And um, I got this to go for a while, right? Until eventually, apparently, the AI decided that it had had enough of my shenanigans. And remembered, oh wait, Peach isn't supposed to be this far forward at this point. And just, and then Peach, I witnessed Peach start, like, I think, or no, I think I let her be in first place, right? So that I could hold everybody back. Away from it. Away from her. Um, with like shells and everything. And eventually the AI just gave up and she drove off the edge of the track repeatedly until she ended up in the proper placement. And that was it. And I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe how badly the game wanted everybody to finish in the particular places. And now I want to try doing that again. Or like, I want to find out if anybody else has ever witnessed that. I couldn't believe it. Because that was the kind of thing I did as a kid, because I didn't have very many games. Because remember that glitch that I found in uh, uh, Super Mario Advance? That was just me being determined to make the game do a specific thing. Which I think is how people who find glitches usually find them anyway. Um, it was me determined to get that weird ball thing out of the vase. But uh, in this in this case, it was that I noticed that everybody always finished in the same spots. So it's like, well, I'm gonna force them not to do that. And then uh, it didn't work. <laughs> I couldn't. I could. It would work for a while, but uh, eventually the game was like, nope. I see what you're doing. That's not how we work around here. <laughs> I really want to know if anybody else has ever witnessed that or tried to do that. And then I want to know if I can do it again. How can the GBA handle this, though? Um, I think because... Uh, I think the main thing... Because I've been watching some videos about this. I think the main thing is that... Um, unlike predecessors like the Super NES or the NES or things like that, the GBA is not limited just to tile-based tile graphics mode. And it does have built-in just bitmap display, so like, instead of having to tell the screen specific 8x8 tiles or whatever that uh, it has to draw and has to build all of its graphics out of tiles, you can just send it, like, just direct... You can, like, direct each, each individual pixel of the screen to be a specific color. And, uh, that makes 3D stuff possible. And it has, uh just has enough processing power to do this more reasonably than the Super NES could, for instance. I always I always just refer to the Game Boy Advance as being like the Super NES with the Super FX chip built in. <laughs> Plus extra. Like, this is beyond what the Super, Super FX chip could ever do. So... <laughs> That's basically what the point of Super Mario Advance was, and all of the stuff that they added uh, to Super Mario Bros. 2 was just like, look at all this stuff that the Game Boy Advance can do. Look at these Moai heads, they're incredible. <laughs> I like how all the lighting is done just by, like, polygon colors. It's all just pre-drawn lighting. Yeah, I love the GB, the GB, the GB, GBA. The Game Boy 
A. Advance. Advance. <laughs> yeah, this game, like, this almost feels like a, a DS game, right? Like, I think the main difference on the DS would just be that this would have a higher frame rate and, like, the environments would probably be textured. That's probably about it. This is really close. And you wouldn't have the, uh, the draw order errors. <laughs> Like, uh, Shiny pointed out, the Game Boy Advance didn't have things built in, like, depth buffering, or anything like that. So, they would have had to write all that stuff themselves, and it's understandable that there would be some errors. The low frame rate is just because, um, it takes, uh, like, this is pushing the Game Boy, so it's taking, like, more than one frame to finish drawing the scene every time. And sometimes uh, the detail takes more frames than others, so that's why it kind of dips every once in a while. Also, there's another, like, real picture of the moon that's just been crunched down <laughs> from the background. Nobody wants to draw the moon themselves. Everybody is just content to use real pictures of the moon. <laughs> and yeah, like, I'm not gonna complain about the frame rate in this game, because it's really good, actually. Relatively speaking, it's really good. Oh, also, someday I want to get the Doom games for the Game Boy Advance. I think there's Doom 1 and 2. I think both of those are on Game Boy Advance. Apparently, it's a really good version of Doom. What do I think of the moon landing? I don't know how to answer that question. <laughs> I think it's cool, I guess. Diora 2. I used to have that one as a kid. 1300 points. Got 50 seconds. These are weird. Look at. There's barely any difference between the colors here. Look at that. There's like orangey yellow or bright, bright yellow. Let's go for the bright yellow. I had a blue Diora too as a kid. It was just like all nice blue color. <laughs> Dehydrated or hydrated? Take your pick. <laughs> yeah, it's a pea color car. Oh, hi, Shiny. Welcome to stream. I was just mentioning you. Something that you told me. I was trying to- sorry I got started without you, Shiny. I was just trying to- I had to start early because Arrow is also going to stream today. Bad luck, rookie. Wow, we actually lost a level. Oops. Well, I guess we're driving with this car. It's so easy to just pick the first car. Oh, yeah, I had to get started early because Arrow's streaming today and I don't want to be in her way. <laughs> Whoa, look at this graphics. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I have a couple other things I want to talk about. Um Firstly that I'm really looking forward to that new Hot Wheels game that comes out this year. Uh Hot Wheels Unleashed. What the heck? I needed- I was barely below what I needed. Um... And that one... I'm really, uh, excited for it because... Unlike most Hot Wheels games, like this one for instance, that just kind of focus on the, like, car cars... 
Hot Wheels Unleashed is focusing on a lot of the really weird models that they do, and I really appreciate that. <laughs> Plus, it just looks really cool. It's like, uh... It's one of those games where it treats the cars as, uh... You know, like... Toys? <laughs> like they're toy-sized? And they just inexplicably have like flames come out of their exhaust pipes still. It's gonna be incredible. I'm definitely streaming it. I hope you all will look forward to that. It's gonna be fantastic. But yeah, they're putting in some ridiculous cars like they showed... They showed uh, in the most recent trailer, they've got like, there's a car where it's like Snoopy's house and Snoopy's on it. That's in there. <laughs> they've got the DeLorean from Back to the Future in there. They've got the, what's it called, Knight Rider? You know that car that like talks? The black, the black car. It's called Knight Rider, right? Anyway, they've also got like, there's like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles bus. It's just some wild stuff in there. Ah, oh, poop. This one's tough. Well, how did that score a thousand? What the hell did I even do? I can't Knight Rider crawl? <laughs> also, a personal, uh, th like, favorite that they've put in is one of the cars from Acceleracers. We were just talking about Acceleracers, um, with Arrow last time we streamed, if you remember. We were here. They put in one of the evil alien cars. In uh, Hot Wheels Unleashed. I'm happy about that one. Okay, that was 900. Oh, well, I've definitely scored enough now. I needed 1300, I've got 1400. <laughs> And also, good news, they've said that there's going to be no microtransactions or DLC for Hot Wheels Unleashed. So, like, all these cool cars, you're not going to have to pay extra. I was worried. I was like, oh, are these going to be, like, DLC things? You're going to have to pay for these? Nope. There's none of that in this game. It's kind of sad that that has to be a selling point nowadays. But, uh... Still nice. <laughs> it also seems like it's gonna be like Trackmania style, and it's gonna have like you can just build the tracks and everything. And it's got like different environments. It looks like it's gonna be really, really good. I'm like kind of really impressed at how good of a Hot Wheels game they're managing to make here. It doesn't seem like it's getting a lot of, like, fanfare or hype or anything from most people, but for me it definitely is. It's like the my most anticipated game this year is Hot Wheels Unleashed. <laughs> and that's why I'm playing all these Hot Wheels games, by the way, is just getting myself ready. Shan, are you using the Game Boy Player for the GameCube? I really wanted that, but it's like... The Game Boy Player itself isn't very expensive, nor is the GameCube. But the cables for GameCubes are very expensive. And the disc... Because there's a disc you have to put in for the Game Boy Player. The disc is really expensive. Yeah, I'm doing extensive Hot Wheels training, Chroma. <laughs> Previously, if you want to go back in my stream archives, by the way, I also have Hot Wheels Stunt Track Driver in there. The PC version, and I also, which is the one I grew up with, and I also played the Game Boy Color version. You can mod your GameCube to not require the startup disc. Oh, interesting. 
I ended up just getting a Wii instead of a GameCube because it was way cheaper. <laughs> like everything about having a Wii was going to be less expensive than having a GameCube. Plus it'll play Wii games, so... <laughs> Yeah. I'll, I can live, though. <laughs> I can live without the Game Boy Player. Had to make that decision. GameCube memory cards are really inexpensive, though, for whatever reason. Even brand new. I got, like, a brand new, never-opened GameCube memory card, and it was only, like, $15. Couldn't believe it. Ouch. Trying to read the chat and drive at the same time, it's not working very well. I do like the idea of uh, there being some uh, GameCube games that you can use the Game Boy Advance as a controller for. Oh, same, Biss. <laughs> like, my Game Boy Advance is in a really sorry state. And it's extra painful because I have the really good Game Boy Advance, the Game Boy Advance SP, and it's the backlit version. Which, as a kid, I had no idea that I had anything special. But now it's like, those are really rare and expensive. And mine is just, like, beat up like heck. And the screen has problems, and it's like, oh, but that's the good screen. <laughs> I can't get that replaced because it's so expensive. Although I think it seems to just be like a f like not a problem with the screen itself, but rather the connection. So I think like people seemed pretty pretty optimistic that if I took the, took the thing apart, I would be able to reattach the screen and uh, fix the issue because it just looks like scrambled data as opposed to um, the screen is actually bro broken. Um, then you gotta worry, is it just the connection, or did I screw up something with the with the motherboard, and data is just getting uh, scrambled? Because, do you want to know how it ended up broken? It's because, at one point, when I was a kid, I decided to throw the thing across the room. <laughs> I don't know why! I don't even remember why I threw it. I've never done that before, or since. But something possessed me to throw it one time. And then it's been like that ever since. I just... I, I remember I threw it. I remember nothing else. I don't know why I threw it. <laughs> Incredible. My, my newest... Uh, new 3DS XL which is the, I have the Galaxy Edition one. It's like it's purple and it's got the, the Galaxy on it. It's really pretty. I treat that thing like a small child. I treat it like it is my baby. And I allow no harm to come to it. I'm always very gentle. I had a bad habit of keeping my, th my previous one just loose in my pocket. And uh, that wasn't really good for it. <laughs> this one I always put it in its case. Things like that. Very, very careful with it. I've been really careful with the Switch too, but it has ended up in sort of a sorry state. Um, which, that one I'm not blaming on me. I'm going to blame it on Nintendo kind of cheaping out on their construction with this latest system. My uncle recently found an old DS Lite and gave it to me. This car is called the Governor that I just unlocked. All right, we're in space now. Let's see what the Governor looks like. It's a Batmobile, or the purple Batmobile. Let's drive this.
Um, but yeah, this DS Lite is in really good condition. Oh, poop, this is gonna be tough. Except there's like dirt. Like, not just, not like the usual kind of dirt that you see on a game console, where it's just like old, like skin or whatever. It's like, it's like brown dirt. It's like it's been outside in the mud kind of dirt. And that's a little bit concerning. But it works. I showed it in, uh, I showed it in the video where I unboxed this game. Actually, that was the first time I tested a game in it. <laughs> but, uh... This, the bottom screen is really, really scratched up. That needs some work. I might be able to, like, polish it or something. But, like, so whoever... Whoever had it was a bit rough with the bottom screen, but otherwise it's in good condition. So it's not going to be the one... It's not going to be the one that I play, because I have a, I have another DS Lite that's in much better shape. It does have, like, one dead pixel, though, which is kind of annoying. So, like, neither of them are perfect. <laughs> So here's the space level. This one is kind of the most boring, in my in my opinion. There's not much interesting going on here. Imagine dead pixels. <laughs> I always I had bad luck with DS Lite, so the old one I had that I ended up losing is why I don't have it anymore. Um, that one also ended up with one dead pixel on the bottom screen. Also, um, I noticed that like different DS lights have like different... they feel different, they have different texture. Like the double color ones, like the ones that would be like dark on the inside and on the bottom of them, and then just have like a color on the outside. They feel different from the the solid color ones, like the like the pink, the coral pink one that I have. The texture of it it feels different from those from the uh, the two color ones. It's weird. They're like made from a different material, which I didn't realize until I had like two next to each other to compare. Can your Nintendo 64 get a dead pixel? <laughs> the screen you play it on could, but the system itself can't. The hell happened? Oh yeah, the other thing I wanted to tell everybody about was the wild dream I had last night. I can remember all the details. Okay, so first of all, context. I have... I have recurring dreams about getting a Wii U, or just having a Wii U. And that was involved in this, partially. Um, so I, I had a Wii U, and I was in the modern day, so this is taking place now. And I was looking at the eShop, just to see what was on there, because cause in the dream I only had a couple games, I had like New Super Mario Bros. U. And, uh, yeah, I'm haunted by the Wii U. <laughs> I feel like at some point I just have to get one. And maybe the dreams will stop. And maybe like, maybe that's how it... Because, like, I've never had one before. <laughs> it's just I can't justify to myself getting one in real life. Because, like, I'm not going to... There's not going to be anything to do with it. I'm going to have, like, two things. And they're not going to be that great. Like, I would get, like, Kirby and the Rainbow Curse. Because it's, like, one of the few Kirby games I haven't played. But, like, Biss is always telling me that game's not even very good, so it's like... Why would I... Why would I... It's gonna be, like... A good chunk of money to get this thing. Just to play a poopy game. And I would probably get, like, some... Nintendo 64 Virtual Console. And I would probably get the... Super Mario Advance... Super Mario Bros. 3. That, uh... Goes with all the e-reader levels. 
but like that would be a, like I'm not gonna like because I could you know if I really wanted to I could play those games for free so it's like why why am I gonna spend all this money just to do a couple of things and like I'm planning to play Wind Waker on uh, on GameCube as opposed to the remake let me restart Oh, I don't want, like again this like <laughs> it's gonna be fairly expensive to do this and it's like I'm not gonna I have limited funds and I'm not gonna spend them on Star Fox Zero <laughs> I do wanna I wanna this is always trying to get me to play canvas curse canvas curse I haven't played I, I wanted to get squeak squad and canvas curse um, I ended up only getting Squeak Squad because Canvas Curse is uh, very expensive for some reason. Anyway, back to the story. So, um, so I have a Wii U. I've had it for a while, so I'm looking at the eShop just to see what's on because I wanted to like get some other games. And um, on the eShop, I find out that there was a game recently released. It's just like a normal racing game, like maybe sort of like a low, a lower budget racing game, but it's called Balls HD. <laughs> the racing game is called Balls, and then HD. And, I, that, <laughs> and then I realized, wait, there's a meme like that. And it, they can't believe. And in the dream, that was the origin of the meme. Was there was there was a there was a racing game on the Wii U called Balls HD. So, so that happens, and then I find out there's like a section where people can just upload things, and because Nintendo doesn't care about the Wii U anymore, they're not moderating it, and so there's just porn on there. <laughs> just, it's just there. No, you do not, because it was just... It was just cars, and it was called Balls HD for some reason. I, uh, it was for like the shock value, I guess. It's like, oh my god, they called the game Balls HD. It worked, I remembered it. Even though I was asleep when I saw it, I still remember it now. Those rascals, they got me with their, with their marketing. <laughs> they made a racing spinoff of Balls 3D. <laughs> So anyway, then I'm like telling people about this, right? In the dream. And they think somehow it was like, it was the McElroy brothers. That I was, that I was speaking to. And like, they were making like jokes about this. And then I had like a joke that I wrote. And it was like, it ended up being like more long winded than I wanted. And they decided it wasn't funny. And we were like writing these all on like this big, like sheet of paper, like a poster sized paper. And uh, And then we didn't like my joke, so I just I just cut it out. And that was funnier. It was to have like a cut out piece of the poster was funnier to them. Um, but then then it turned out um, that the year was not actually 2021. Like I saw the year and it was 2012, and I was like, hey, wait wait a minute, hey, wait a minute, I'm not in the right year. And so then I started explaining to them this. It was like, well. The stuff I was telling you about the Wii U isn't true yet. Like, the, I saw that in 2021. And then they're like, what? And so, like, I'm, like, telling them, like, all this stuff that happened with the Wii U. Like, how it wasn't very successful and everything. And how the Switch came out, and that's much better. I'm, like, telling them all this stuff, and they're just, they're, like, not believing me. And then... And then, oh, poop! I see, I came in... Last, I came in second at the last second. Um, but yeah, so I'm telling them all this stuff about the year 2021 that I'm from, and then this like entity appears, like this like this woman, who's like who like takes me aside and is like, I'm sorry, but uh, you're screwing up the timeline. I can't like. It was fine for you to go back in the past, but you've like you've like broken your contract 
or something. I don't know. It was just like we can't we can't have you telling people about the year 2021, so you gotta go back now. And going back was like this weird like liminal space, sort of like it's almost like the back rooms, except for everything was like furnished. It wasn't just like it wasn't just like empty office rooms. You made a contract with Entropy? <laughs> but yeah, it was all like furnished. There was like all these rooms with like stuff in them. Like it almost looked like a like a grandma's house type of place, you know? Where like it was like dolls and things and it was just like like lacy like doilies and stuff. <laughs> and I had, you had to like go fast through this stuff. There was, I can't even remember everything. There's just, there were so many things. It was, that was like, some of the rooms were like that. There was, there was just like, just so many different kinds of rooms. And you had to run through all of these to get back to the future. <laughs> and there was like somebody named Mama who was there. That was her nickname. <laughs> it was wild. So yeah, that was my dream last night. <laughs> I gotta pay attention. I'm like distracting myself by talking about stuff. <laughs> and I keep flubbing my jumps. I told you that's how I lose. I flub the jumps. I have time travel dreams fairly often. <laughs> Is it really something? Also, what's funny in dreams like this is, like, is, like, I'm given, like, false memories. Like, I'm always, like, I, it never feels off to me because in the dream I remember it, you know? I, like, remember all this. I feel, or at least I feel like I remember all this stuff, right? And then I wake up and I'm like, I don't remember that. What, do you, what were you talking about? Yeah, no, the loop puts you into a specific speed, Bis. It, like, locks your speed. The loop is automated. There we go. Twin Mill. That's a nice car. That's a classic Hot Wheels. 100... 1100 points. Let's go for Twin Mill. Yeah, we gotta go for the red one. Oops. Well, that didn't go very well. <laughs> I don't know, Biss. You're gonna have to take that up with the developers of this game, I think. Hell yeah, there we go. Face off. You've got 30... How did they decide on 37 seconds? They couldn't even pick a round number. I'm gonna have to say, I think yellow is probably most often the least flattering color for a car to be. In 
and yet there's so many yellow cars in this game. My only 900. Isn't very good. Just gonna pick the vulture so I stop. We can get back in faster. Hot Wheels loves the aesthetics of loops, but not the consequences of them. Let me, let me not read the chat while I'm trying to drive around corners. That seems reasonable to me. I'm racing a different car this time. There's a thousand. Hell yeah. All right, we've got 1,100. Means I should just play it safe. There you go. You want to see the governor? Again? Let's play as the black governor this time instead of the purple one. Let's do this. What are you messaging me, Bess? Oh. That really is something to think about while I stream, Bess. Thanks. This is just the Batmobile. Um, look at this cute giant rocket. <laughs> Yeah, as I was mentioning earlier, I just it really amuses me how every environment and every environment in this game is just trying to be like stereotypically what little boys would like. You got dinosaurs, spiders, outer space, pirates, there's a volcano coming up. The jungle one is the only one that's like less like that, but like the way it's designed is definitely yeah, this is like we're trying to appeal to little boys. Very stereotypically. <laughs> that's what you like? Well, that's fair. It's still funny to me how, like, uncreative this is. It's just like, we, we know what, we know what the boys like. We'll put that in the Hot Wheels game. Put the cars there. And they'll love it. And then this game is just like extremely obscure. Also, one of the reasons uh, I'm playing this is because I mentioned earlier on in the stream there are no full playthroughs of this on YouTube. Like, nobody has played this entire game on video. And I'm fixing that. Oh yeah, I was hoping, Lonk Games, I was hoping that Hot Wheels Unleashed would have the mystery machine. <laughs> Maybe it still will. Maybe they haven't shown all the cars. I'm hoping that the Switch for- Oh look! Hey look, it happened! I think it just happens on this track. Somebody got stuck. Look, one of the NPCs isn't moving on the map. Watch this, when I pass them, they're gonna start moving again. This game is ridiculous. Three minutes is a short track <laughs> in this game. <laughs> oh yeah, I was I was also bringing this up earlier on in the stream. Okay, so this item here, right, is called the Jet Booster. Um, do you want to know, like, okay, so tell me, tell me your guess about what the Jet Booster does. So you, so you see that item, it looks like a jet pack called the jet booster what do you think it does what would your guess be promo don't answer you already know <laughs> makes you go hyperspeed 
That's what that was my guess. Oh, there they are. Look, they're moving again. <laughs> this doesn't make you go fast. Right, that's what you'd expect, right? Um, but what it actually does is tighten your turning radius. And also make it so that you can perform tricks faster. Do I like F-Zero? I like the original F-Zero. Because I love Mode 7 stuff. And I love the aesthetic of that game a lot. Um, and then I recently found out that there's two Game Boy Advance F-Zero games that are also styled like that. And I have to get them. Those are on my list of stuff I've got to get. I need those for my collection. I haven't really had any interest in the 3D F-Zeros, no, they don't really... They don't do any of the things that I liked from the original F-Zero. <laughs> in fact, my favorite video game song ever is uh, F-Zero Medley from Super Mar Smash Bros. Ultimate. That's a really good song. Um, but yeah, I can't believe that the that the the jet booster just makes you turn better. Like what? How did? <laughs> Why? I've unlocked Bedlam. Quick book. From a flip to hood air, and a go barrel. All right, this this level is the worst level in the entire game. This one annoyed me so much because because both of these. Well, first of all, the flip to hood air, it took me forever to figure out how you even do that. I had to learn what a hood air was. And then, and then how to do it fast enough, because you gotta do the flip first and then the hood air. Um, and then the go barrel, there's two, like, so the barrel you can either do left or right. And the go barrel is doing it twice in the same direction. Um, and both, either direction. Yeah, this is the one I got stuck on and had to look up, Chroma. But both directions are just called a go barrel. Like, there's not a go left and a go right. It's just go. And the game specifically wants you to do it in a certain direction, but it doesn't tell you which one. The same with the flip. And it's like... You gotta try every combination, <laughs> and it's really annoying, and plus you have to pull them off. I hate it. I hate this level. We're gonna do it. <laughs> That was trunk air. You gotta press down. So you have to hold B and then press up or down to do those. Here's a hood. Oh, I forgot to do the. F Try again. I'll just press down so that I'm already. Okay, there it was. Ah, hell. I hope it's the left go barrel. It is not. Or it doesn't count if you like if you're like too close to the ground when you finish. It's I don't. Uh, it's it's a pain in the butt. I gotta tell you, this is a pain in the butt. Flip to hood air. Go barrel. Didn't count. Oh. There it was. Thank goodness it was the left one. It took a lot fewer tries than the first time, I'll tell you what. Shan says, I will propose the most awesome racetrack ever. In space, with dinosaurs, many volcanoes, and aliens and spiders. And it is a thunderstorm and all tech is futuristic looking. <laughs> That sounds like a place that would be in Hot Wheels. In a Hot Wheels game, for sure. 36 seconds. Make a fast line and don't ease up. Bedlam. This is Bedlam. I don't remember this car either. Remember on the back of the box it says this game includes all the most popular Hot Wheels. Oh, this, this level is one of Abyss's least favorite tropes, which is the fire and ice trope. You've got snow and you've got volcano in one level. Also, you have a giant lizard! Look at that! There's a giant lizard on this track! For no reason! I love it! 
So I love the way that they did lighting for the lava with just col coloring in the uh, the polygons <laughs> around the lava. It's very quaint. <laughs> this is a very quaint game. Now it's faster to go this way. Lizards are self-justifying. <laughs> Somebody needs to screenshot the big lizard and show it to Arrow. See what she thinks. Big lizard on the volcano. Would I ever speedrun this game? I feel like I'd get too bored. <laughs> I could I could probably have a record on it or something though, because I doubt anybody else is speedrunning this game. Also, um, something that might be worth looking into is I happen to look at the uh, the cutting room floor page about this game, and there was very little information, but it basically just said that this game includes data from a previous game, uh, like a, a LEGO Racers game, which I presume was also in 3D, but I, I don't see anybody talk about that one. And the cutting room floor didn't have any information about that game. Only this one. And then saying that it had stuff from the LEGO Racers game. So the LEGO Racers game is very mysterious. I gotta look that up. There's a, if this game has like a, a sibling out there. Gotta find it. It's a Transformers racing game. Incredible. The, the hell? It's an orange loop. I'm gonna. I thought that this game was gonna take a couple streams, but we're gonna we're gonna be done. I'm not going to do the part... Well, we'll see how much time I have, because I have another game I want to stream today, and I want to get it all done before Arrow streams later. It does do nice things with color, Shiny. You are correct. It's just, it's very quaint. And it has a big lizard. <laughs> Who do you think decided to put the big lizard there? And do you think that they were like... Do you think they were, they thought they were very clever? Were they, were they pleased with their big lizard? I would be pleased with my big lizard if I put that there. Somebody who should have gotten paid more <laughs> decided to put the big lizard in. <laughs> oh, I hate that jump. You just fail it inexplicably. That's most games industry folks. <laughs> I feel like I should get paid more for my game development. <laughs> the hell was that? It's interesting. Which is why I'm hoping that uh, when I get this demo for Grey Area done, that'll entice some people over to come. Uh, spend some money <laughs> to help support the game's development. Oh yeah, Chroma was commenting about the ridiculous speed earlier, Shan. Also, do you like how it just randomly oscillates? Like between 172 and 176? Why? Why is it... Why does it do that?
And it also doesn't seem like you're going that fast. I think just everything is really big. Oh, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, also, um, people, people seem very receptive to the idea of gray area being $15 when it comes out. So I'm happy about that. There wasn't anybody who was like, I'm not gonna buy it for $15, so... It'll be good. Because one of the... because... One of the problems with my games being so inexpensive... What happened to that model? There was a bunch of holes in it going around loop. Did you see that? Um, one of the problems... With, uh... The price being so low is that I didn't really have much room to pay uh, my collaborators, like musicians, or musician, or uh, like extra programming stuff. I didn't, I didn't really have much room <laughs> to pay people. But with fifteen dollars per copy, uh, I'll have much more room to to give money to uh, my other people. So that's one of the that's one of the main reasons that I want to sell the game for that much. So that everybody is compensated. I used to have this car as a kid in this color too. Five hundred. Let's try again. I think the cars are regular size best and just everything around them is massive. That's what I was getting at. There you go, perfect. Whoa, that was great. You stop saying that that was hot now. Just realize. I had like hundreds of them as a kid, Shan, so I know plenty of about Hot Wheels. <laughs> Flat out race, alright. I think this is the last one. Let's do the silver one. Whee! These last couple of environments are kind of boring. I mean, this one gets extra points for the giant lizard, but otherwise it's... It's kind of lackluster. <laughs> I liked the dinosaurs and the spiders and the pirates better. And the... well, the jungle was pretty cool too. But space and the volcano are kind of boring looking. I like this one better than space though, because it's got the big lizard. <laughs> Just inexplicably. And that I enjoy. They should have had like a big, like stereotypical looking alien in the space one that would have elevated it. Yeah, the jungle was was nice from a color choice perspective. What if I can just make them fly into the air? There's the big lizard. That's a, oh wait, there's another big lizard. There's two big lizards in this environment. Heck yeah. Oh, I see. It was a nighttime jungle. Sometimes polygons just inexplicably disappear. Which I feel is to be expected. See, also a problem with this level is that it doesn't do that trick I was mentioning that the other ones do, where they just put a bunch of stuff in the way all the time so you don't see the pop-in. This one has fairly open spaces they're trying to do, so the pop-in is more obvious. And then also kind of docks it a little bit. Two minutes for one lap, chat. That was a two minute lap. This is a six minute long track. Oh, 
How much longer am I going to stream? Probably another one or two hours. I usually like to stream for four hours. Probably another one hour, because I think Arrow stream is going to be probably in about an hour. I do not wish to encroach on Arrow. Because I have one other game I'm going to play after this, another Hot Wheels game. And this next one is going to be one that I actually grew up with. <laughs> this one I only just played this year. I would have enjoyed this as a kid, probably. So, Although I would have been disappointed that uh, like you don't actually see the opponent cars very much. <laughs> Also, I want to point out that when you do tricks in this game, it's just press a button and it does the trick. Um, just so I can compare that to how tricks work in the next game I'm going to play. No, we already finished that one, Shan. <laughs> the robot one. Can't believe the two minute lap time. It was just under two minutes that time. <laughs> it's absurd how long this is. I think music was not the strong point on the Game Boy Advance most of the time. I think it's I think the Game Boy is kind of infamous for having a poor sound chip. Though, so, so. <laughs> hello fidget. My ah, poop. Well, I hope that the pudding is good, Shan. Yeah, get scronked. Get scronked, truck. Hey, Shan. Also, Biss, if you're still there, definitely let me know when, uh, because I assume you're streaming with Arrow, as you usually do on Tuesdays. Um, let me know when you're starting, and I'll, uh, I'll send over a raid. We will raid Arrow's stream. So the uh, the next one I'm going to play is uh, Hot Wheels World Race on Game Boy Advance. And it's less technically impressive, but I think it's the better game between these two. <laughs> For sure. There we go. You did it. You've completed the game show mode and proven that you really are a stunt track champion. The fun has only just begun. It's not... It's really not a new game mode at all. It's just the same one again, but it doesn't... You don't do the trick parts. It's just two races in each environment, and that's it. To see Champions League. We'll do like a little bit of this. Look at what we're doing. Yeah, we'll do a little bit. <laughs> T Rex Valley. You can see there's just two per environment. And it's just kind of a slog because it's just exactly what you just did. Also, this car doesn't come in two colors, it's only golden. Which is disappointing. This is like the last car you unlock. And I think this car is faster than the others, but it doesn't... Like I, like I think it is. Also, for anybody who wasn't here earlier, you get to see the dinosaur environment now. It's 
I like how that big lizard was bigger than any of these dinosaurs, by the way. The real dinosaur was the lizard all along. It was the lizard we met along the way. <laughs> this first level actually has the worst frame rate, because I think they put in the most, like, geometry to the level. On this level. So they kind of give the worst first impression as far as frame rate goes. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, I just realized something that uh, Mode 7 type stuff on the Game Boy Advance has over uh, Super NES. Is that, like, so you know in Super Mario Kart when there would be, like, objects on the track? They would just have to go through, like, several predetermined sizes of sprites as they get closer. But uh, the Game Boy Advance has sprite scaling, so it doesn't have to do that. And it is just much smoother. It's kind of got that going for it. <laughs> yeah, those big T-Rexes tank the frame rate. <laughs> and this big T-Rex mouth. But yeah, I think you get the picture. I don't... Like, this doesn't do anything... This game mode doesn't do anything new, so... I feel like I have completed my my task of making a video of the entire game. Even if I don't play all of these tracks. Nobody else even nobody else has made video of as much of this as I just did, so. And it only took me like an hour and a half. So like nobody before me could sit down and play this game for an hour and a half to just make video of the whole thing. This guy, maybe there's somebody out there, and I just wasn't finding it. But pretty much every gameplay video of this was just a small, small snippet. Because I was trying to find a long play for, like, to help me with that one level I was stuck on, so I could just see somebody do it, but there wasn't, I didn't find any. Nobody made it that far in the game. <laughs> On video, at least. <laughs> but yeah, you can see how this game gets a little boring, though. Like, I gotta be fair and say that this game is pretty, pretty boring in the end. Especially this part, where it's just, okay, do the races again, forehead. It's just boring. <laughs> Yeah, it's a historic stream. I've played the whole game. <laughs> and we're done. Nice driving. You're well on the way to winning the Champions League. I'm well on my way, huh? I did one race. That's well on the way. Apparently there's multiplayer in this game, but have any way to try that. Wait. Wait, what? Wait, what? It's just take turns multiplayer? I can't believe this. They, uh, I didn't realize it was take turns multiplayer. Oh my god. Okay, that's great. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> I didn't realize it was take turns. I thought this would have had. I thought it was like the. Well, I guess it was silly of me to think that this would have the game link cable compatibility because I mean, it's already running so much. I don't think it would. I don't think it would be able to run that. <laughs> yeah, that's stunt track. Look at how crusty the logo is here, by the way. This game has some crusty graphics outside of the... on the menus and everything. 
It's really, really crusty. <laughs> it's kind of unbelievably crusty, to be honest. Maybe it's so crusty because they had they didn't have much cartridge space left over after all the 3D stuff, and they had to crunch everything. Oh, Shiny wants to defeat the Great Evil. Oh, you haven't been here since I've had the new Great Evil defeating. Have you, Shiny? Here's the Great e The Great Evil has gotten smaller since... since before. Oop, oh, that's... There we go. An extra explosion for you. Oh wait, no, you did see this. I remember you commented about it. <laughs> uh, what the hell did I just do? There. <laughs> Alright. Time to switch games.